Hello everyone and welcome to my channel where I will show you how to create beautiful artistic floral images for yourself. Today I'm going to be showing you how to edit this lovely red amaryllis. Now this image is quite a few years old and this time of year we're going through the winter in the UK. It's always good to have a have a few images that you can that you can go back to from years gone by and do a bit of editing when the weather's bad. So hence, this is one of the ones that I've been working on. So let's get to grips with, um, with what I'm going to be doing with this one. If you've got any questions, any comments, please leave them in the comments below. This is the finished article. And this is the one that I started with. So as you can see, black background, because that was my, still is one of my favourite ways of taking flowers because I do think that the images really pop on a black background but as I say I'm getting around to editing old images so let's have a look and see what we can do with this one it's probably going to be slightly different than the one I did originally because they especially with the backgrounds they all turn out slightly different but um, I think you'll get the idea and you'll be able to practice on your own so before we do anything else I think we'll just check First of all, is the composition right? And I would say yes. It's in the center of the image, which I quite like. You could put it to the left so that the flower is actually going into the right. But to be honest, I think this suits a square, square crop. So I think what we'll do is we'll just zoom in and have a look and see if we've got any blemishes. And to be honest, this is quite a clean flower. So let's just have a look around. I can't see anything there that's glaringly obvious. It's always better to correct it before you start doing any editing at all. Um, and that looks pretty clean to me. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to create a copy of your background. So anything we do, we always make a copy. So as you can always go back, do it if you want to. So there's the background copy. Now I think the next thing we'll do is create the new background. So let's just go and have a go at that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crop. I'm going to crop into this original image quite a bit. Doesn't matter if it's not very good quality because it's going to be blurred anyway. So that's probably about it. And what I'm going to do is get the clone tool. Make sure you're on 100%, flow 50%. Get quite a big brush and sample and just keep sampling. Don't take too long, get rid of the bits of green. It's that bit sort of like contrast with the image. As I say, it's going to be blurred anyway, so. And it won't look the same as the one I've already done, as I say, because everyone's going to be different. It's just right over there. So what I'll do now is go into filter Go down to blur, Gaussian blur. And there's a bit too much detail in that, so I'm going to move it up a bit further. A bit further. In fact, what I might do is there's a few dark spots there, which are probably a bit distracting. Let's just do a bit more cloning. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Let's try again. Up to filter, down to blur, Gaussian blur. That's better. Okay, you haven't got any of those dark spots. So I'm going to go down a bit more, a bit more. I think maybe that's it. Let's just have a look at my, my copy. See, it's different, but it's okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to save this as a background. 
So wherever you want to save it, for ease, I'm just going to put it on the desktop and I'm just going to call it background. And save. But now we're going to go back into the history and we're going to click on the original image and take it back to where we were. So this is the one we're going to work on. Now I'll go and find my background, which I actually put on the desktop for ease. There's my background. I say open. We've got our original image and we've got our background. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into select, subject. Now, because it's on black, Photoshop has made an absolutely brilliant job. So all I'm going to do now is select the stem. So we'll go up to the tool up here, quick selection tool, make sure it's on the plus and bring it down so that it selects the stem and that was really easy. If only they were all as easy as that. I'll get rid of that as well. Next thing we're going to do is go to select and mask just to tidy up any edges that there might be because the black might show through. Yeah, as I thought. It's not bad a bad job though, is it? Now on the right hand side, I've actually got mine on layers. There's various ones you can do here, which, which shows what background they're, they're actually on for masking purposes. So you've got onion skin. You've got marching ants. Takes a bit of time to catch up my computer. Overlay. On black. On white. Black and white. On layers. This is the one I prefer to use. I can see everything a lot better, but it's up to you as to what you want to use. You can actually click the remember settings if you want to. If you think you're going to be doing the same sort of settings, but you can always um, move the sliders around anyway, even if you've got remember settings on, you can all, always adjust these settings anyway. But it gives you somewhere, something to work from if you put remember settings in. So remember settings, you can click that. We're gonna be on color aware, edge detection section. This is where we do some, some settings. Now I've got mine on 20 the radius, then I've got uh, smart radius, smooth at 12, feather at three, don't normally bother too much with contrast and shift edge minus 36. The thing is, it really depends on what look you want, but if you sort of play around these sliders, sometimes you can't hardly see a difference, but I've gone into the plus now. If you take it right over to the to the right, you can see how it's really changed. The edges made them very, very bold. So we don't actually want that look. Because it was the setting I'd already used, I'm going to keep going until you get rid of that really bold edge. But then you've got a decent edge to your stem. So we're talking minus 51%. I'm gonna do minus 60. So I think that's quite reasonable. And also, if you're going to be masking out the edges when you get put your final image into a masking, you're not going to be too bothered about these, these hard, hard edges either. But let's go with that anyway. Now, what I'm going to do is I can see there that there is some black showing through. So we'll just have a go at that. I'm going to do the do zoom. I'm zoom in. And let's have a look at those black bits. Now I'm going to use the refine, the refine edges tool, the middle one. And I'm just going to paint in there. It'll take time if your computer's a little bit slow, it'll take time for it to catch up. But this bit's a little bit fiddly, but it's worthwhile. So just choose the size of your brush depending on 
what you're trying to achieve. I'm not sure whether that one's going to make much difference, but we'll, we'll have a go at this. And all the way up there. And Photoshop makes quite a good job of it. Get rid of that one there. And the fact is, because it's a very, very dark colour, this is why it's uh, making such a good job. If there were similar colours, it might be a bit more difficult. And you'll probably take more time than me. Well, I'm sure you will. Um, I am sort of like rushing this a little bit, but I think you get the idea. Not only that, if you put it on a, a darker background as well, these things might not show up. Let's have a go at that and see what Photoshop does with that. Oh, very good. I don't think that's too bad at all. I think we'll go with that. Okay, so if we come back over to the right, decontaminate colours, tick that, and then here is important, output to new layer with layer mask. So you say okay to that. So what it'll do is it'll put it on its own layer with a mask. Now here's the bit I like. It's just like it's just like magic. So I'm going to zoom out until we've got the image about that size. We're going to go to the background image we've got, and we're going to select the move tool. Click on your image, go up to the one you want to drag it to and pull the mouse down and release. Now we're going to resize it with free transform. Okay, and it doesn't matter if, if this image is bigger than the original image, pull it down. And when you're happy with that, you can either press enter or the tick at the, at the top. Now you're thinking, oh, where's my image gone? Not to worry. What we're going to do is we're going to come across to the layers box and we're going to drag our background underneath the copy. And hey, presto, there it is. Now, as I say, that is not the same as mine, because if you look at that, there is a difference. Every one will be different. So now we're going to start masking the petals. What I'm going to do is go around the edges of the petals to make them look softer so that it doesn't look as though the flower has just been plonked on the background as it looks now. Um, so we've got our layer here with the mask. What you need to do is on the left hand side, you need to make sure your foreground is black, which it says there, black. If you use black in a mask, then what it will do, it will bring the background through over the top of the flower. If you use white, it'll have the reverse effect. So it's actually paint the flower in and the background out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the brush tool. We've got a very soft brush, soft round brush. Make sure your mode is on normal. That's a mistake I sometimes make. I might have a different uh, selection here. So make sure it's on normal. And let's try 25% capacity. Build it up in increments. So start with the opacity low and then build it up as you as you want to. Okay, now make sure you're on the mask and not at the image. So we're just going to paint around the edge. Paint around the edge. And it doesn't matter if you go over, especially on the stem, because we're going to be blurring the stem out much more anyway. So let's just have a look. You can definitely see, can't you? So I'm going to go over it again. Have another go.
there is a very hard edge to these petals and that is exactly how they were with those red edges so it does seem a bit um it does seem a bit hard on that edge but you can actually keep going over 25 percent so it doesn't have to be In fact, if you really wanted to, you could actually sort the edges of these petals out, Brian. This is entirely, entirely up to you. It's um, um, so if I went up to say fifty percent, I'll just actually go in. If I zoom in and get the brush tool, make it smaller. You could actually go around the edges and soften the edges even more. Because what you're doing is you're actually bringing the background in. As I say, depending on the opacity you've got. And I really like this masking. It's I've only just discovered it. I've been using Photoshop for oh, a lot of years. And I've only just discovered this. And I think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. If we zoom out again, and I'll maybe go back in history, you can see there look, what a difference it's made. I think what we'll do is we'll also um, mask the stem out a bit more. So what have we got? Brush tool, soft, 50% maybe. I can do that to the bottom of the stem. Let me see, look. If you've got some 50% now, that's... It's just the case of just keep dabbing until you quite like the stems, quite blurry. And something else I've, I've started doing is just going across the whole of the flower. I mean, you could keep messing about with this forever. And something else I've discovered. So if I put it on 25%, get a big brush and just go all the way across it to give it that sort of dreamier look. And just softens the whole thing up. And I think that looks quite good. So I think that's it. Um, if there's any questions you want to ask, if you've got any comments, please leave them in the comment box below. Uh, it'd be nice to see your images wherever you wherever you're from, whether it's on Facebook or whatever. Until the next one. I'll see you soon.